right, you are watching DefenseReview.com. I'm here with Matthew Kirkpatrick of Colt Canada, and he's going to be showing us the Colt Sword system, which is a really interesting, fascinating system. So, uh, Matt, please take us through it. All right, David, this is a, a technology demonstrator. Uh, what we're looking at here is uh, a bunch of components bolted together to prove the concept so that we can show it to the end users and figure out what their final system is going to look like. This weapon system is consists of a power and data rail that's networked. We've got a number of sensors contained in the boxes right here. There's a camera that holds onto the scope. It's still a standard scope, so we still get a reticle. Swing around you here. Okay. The weapon's powered. We've got a battery on board, and we've got another uh, 36 hours of battery on the vest through a, through a sling. Yep. Yep. It's all wired right now uh, because we're working it through a commercial Wi-Fi network just to prove the concept. You've got to be a member of the press. Yeah, yeah, all right. Go ahead. The, the essence of this particular setup is to demonstrate the system using a sniper spotter scenario. So there's a spotter system that has the same camera, Vectronics uh, laser range finder with GPS setup. When the spotter spots a target, he'll indicate the target with a laser range finder. Because he knows where that is, knows the range and bearing of the target, the target will appear on the battle management software up there. And you can see a number of standard battle management uh, map icons. That's essentially a military range card. You've got map data, you've got map symbols bolted onto it in layers like Photoshop. We've got friendly layer, we've got map layer, we've got enemy force layer, all kinds of other stuff added on into there. And that target shows up on there. You see the target number two is a circle around it? Yeah. That, that target's been indicated and assigned by the spotter to the shooter. So I'll take you through and show you what did that he have, Did he have to laze the target, or are they just going through the guy's camera? He or? can laze the target. We can take target input from the target acquisition system, from the spotter unit, or from any other target acquisition format that's out there. All we need is a grid. I can actually use... So you don't have to laze the target. If I know that there's a guy right here, I can indicate that on the map and have them engage a target by grid reference. Right, but this let's isn't say just for sniper systems. Right. It'll work on anything, including uh, area denial systems. All right, but let's say you have a shooter, or, you know, sniper, whatever. He doesn't necessarily have to laze the target. He can just sight up the target and have be running his camera on the target, right? Yeah, well, we can do any conventional sniper task with this. You can just shoot people all we want with that gun there. Right. What we do with the spotter system, the spotter locates a target it wants to indicate, or even a point of interest. He wants to direct everybody's attention to a barn that's right here. He right. can laze the barn, because that's how we're going to find out the range and bearing to the target. Right. We get range and bearing from the spotter system. Uh, okay, so, uh, but I was just saying, if the, let's say the shooter himself uh, acquires a target that he can't handle himself, okay? Uh, does he have to laze the target himself, or can he just the camera identify that target and place it on the map so no, that a... the camera won't do that on its own. Okay. We know where it's pointed, so he could estimate the range and we'll get a line on there, but this will have a laser range finder on it as well. Oh, so you can okay. use so the weapon laser to right. target. Yeah. Right? But I'll show you what the target handoff looks like first. We'll get the battle management side off. Okay. We don't have the land of make-believe to get. You've got the spotter system with the spotting scope, the camera in it, with the laser range finder and the GPS setup. When he indicates that target, I'll tap on here, and I'm going to actually get rid of this target and show you what it looks like. So we have a bunch of targets we've indicated. One of these targets is hostile, and we say we pick target number three. Hold the touch screen. We assign the target. There's the weapon systems we have available to us right there. I assign that to this sniper team. The screen's not calibrated, and I'm not using the, uh, the pad. Once it's assigned to him, now that target's assigned, and you can see the icons changed, that yes. target's now assigned to that weapon system. You come over here and take a look at the weapon system. Okay. Once that target's assigned, we'll get an update here in a second. The target will be circled. That was your update right there. So that target's just shown up for this weapon system. This is the target he wants to engage. We don't have pointing angle on this right now because we're inside, we don't have the GPS, right. but this compass here will indicate which way to turn to get to the target. And here's a picture of my target that I just indicated. And that would be the scope shot from the uh, spotter. Right, and then it's gonna also show up on this system. That's, that's just a visual representation oh. of what the, uh, what the commander's unit looks oh, like. Oh, okay, got it. Got this it. is what the shooter's gonna get. Got it. So I can move this around. Can I... the commander look at what the shooter's looking at? As soon as I slew this and look at the target, we go back over, go back over to the spotter system and I'll okay. show you what the spotter can do. Spotter, deck commander, whatever you want to do. Once he's assigned the target, he sees that it's assigned. 
he turns on the camera and looks at what the shooter's looking at. Gotcha. So cool. we can we can send him a still picture if we want, or he can just look at it in real time. So now, if that's the guy that we want to shoot, now we can say, confirm that's your target, engage. And we know that he's on the correct target. So it's important to note when you're looking at that, we're not engaging this with a video camera. That video camera is transparent. You're looking at the actual reticle pattern for the scope. So even if the whole system goes dark for whatever reason, we've still got a sniper rifle, it's still in full operational, and the scope is still the same scope it was before. So you're still going to engage the target just like you would normally. The other difference is what we can do using the, uh, the PDA, standard Android device, we've got five or six software programs in here right now that do ballistic calculations. I have range and bearing to the target. I can have this automatically calculate my elevation and windage. Because it's a network system, the weather station is networked into it, so I'm getting real-time wind updates as I'm going along right into the system. Here's your better reticle picture. So that's the, yeah, that's the actual reticle picture right there. Very that's cool. the right. Now, in these magic boxes over here are the sensors for the weapon system. The rate gyros and accelerometers, as well as the GPS sensors, all the sensors combined in here are sensitive enough to tell me what velocity is, so I can tell whether the barrel's shot out or if temperature's affecting my velocity for making long range shots. I can also see when the trigger was squeezed, and this will record 30,000 shots, all of the telemetry from the sensors tied to the video. So I can see video from before until after the shot, tell when the trigger was squeezed, what direction the weapon was pointing, what angle it was at, and where it was on the ground. So we can see all of that and go back through it. It has a shot counter, so if I know what the battle loadout was, I know when we're reaching a critical point and need to be resupplied with ammunition. It's also sensitive enough that it'll tell me when there's something wrong with the gun, like it needs to be cleaned or the gas rings are worn out. That's amazing. It, it already works. We've already, we've already pulled the data from it. Now that's the right... We can use this on any weapon system. This system lifts right off and we can bolt it onto any M4, any sniper rifle, uh, British SA-80, whatever you want to do. All right, it's hot swappable. Not really. The, these dimensions might change depending oh. on the, where the rails are. Okay. The data that we have in there to tell what velocity is has to come from the specific weapons. So we'd have to gather that data set. But as a manufacturer, we're not looking at necessarily sell you the guns. Of course, we want to sell you some bolt rifles. But you come to us with a rifle, we can drop this entire system onto it. At this point, we don't care what scope is on there. This one's very nice, but we can bolt on any scope and put that camera to it. So this is essentially the latest and greatest in wireless warfare for you know for an infantry man, essentially. Uh, this, for a, we're not for, for a this sniper. Is a, this is a, a, the sniper thing is a demonstrator for the technology. We're not giving this to individual riflemen anytime soon. Okay. But you can see where this could be useful for something like a JTAC, a sniper team, uh, command elements for various different weapon systems. If we switch around and move over here and take a look at uh, got here. If I back out of my target screen because I've engaged that target, I can actually get on there and indicate that that target's been destroyed. There's an icon for that if I want to, and then everybody else can see that that target's been destroyed. Or if I indicate my grenade launcher reticle right here, we're not going to get any left-right movement on this because we've got no GPS. But if I switch to the 40 millimeter, as I elevate the gun, you'll see down here is my reticle pattern. Yeah. There's two circles there on the crosshairs. The inside circle is 5 meters, the outside one is 10 meters, burst radius of an HEDP grenade. With this, any target that I've assigned onto the map using whatever asset we want, the, the drone, the target acquisition system, or even just a coordinate on the map, I move the crosshairs over top of the, uh, get the crosshairs back as it elevates. It's real slow updating because of the, the commercial Wi-Fi. Um, normally it would be working on its own system. That crosshairs, wherever it goes on the map, that's where the grenades go to. So yesterday on the range, we were able to engage targets at 300 meters in defilade without seeing them. Watched it on the tablet from the camera on the drone and dropped rounds within a meter of a garbage can. Wow. Just using the phone to aim it. Gotcha. And, here, and here's the X1 or whatever, the uh, drone, right? The little, this little UAS that you're talking about. Oh. Right here. Now, separate system to that, the grenade launcher system is separate. We use the rifle sensors to do that. It took about three months. I said, hey, think we can fire a grenade with the phone? And they did. So we've got the blister trajectory for grenades, put it into the phone, and we got the calculations, and we can drop grenades accurately. 
This is a lighter weight version of the same idea. This is the, their network target acquisition system. Laser rangefinder, <laughs> you know, GPS, and uh, some of the network data and sensors in here, so we can sense angle, direction, all that. This also controls the drone. We could put that same control software into this as well. We laser the target. Target shows up on the battle management software. Once we see the target, we just hold one of the buttons down here. The drone's completely autonomous, takes off, and goes to the target. In this particular case, we were firing on the left side of the range, so we had it defaulted to always go to the right of the target and look left. So it looks at the target, and then we can manually, using the tablet, control where the camera's pointed. This launches out of a backpack. It has about 22 minute runtime. It'll come back automatically when it's out of batteries. So we can change batteries in two seconds and send it back out. Very cool. All right, that's pretty much it, right? Well, this, the, other, okay. the other thing you want to understand about the system is this will work off a wireless network. So we can set this up Bluetooth right now and we could use it all around about 300 feet from sniper to spotter and everything else. It doesn't matter what system it's plugged into. It's completely agnostic to that. So here, any standard battle management data capable radio that anybody's using already in any military situation, like the Harris radio here, we'll use that to communicate. So now we've got ourselves a kilometer, two kilometers, anything tactical network. If we want to use that, which is a military 3G network, that's basically a wireless router like you've got in your house, but data capable and secure, and we can uplink that to a satellite phone. So we've already engaged targets overseas while people are watching in real time in North America. Very cool. uh, sad comment or like... Oh, sad comment, yeah. Fire up your satellites. Very cool. We've uh, actually, through Link 16, passed data to us. F-16 fighter and back from the rifle. So where you see where these targets are indicated? If we want to, if one of the customers asks for it, when I go to assign a target, I'll get a drop-down menu. This is the ones that we have in, installed in the system right now. This could continue on with indirect fire. We could have mortar units on here, we could have artillery, we could have cruise missiles, we can have aircraft, and we could even tell you what ordinance is on the aircraft that is checked in and assigned to us. We can assign that target to whichever one of these assets we have and let them service that target. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. We are at the Colt booth looking at the SWORD system. You are at SHOT Show 2014, and you are watching DefenseReview.com.